say Don. Well, hello, everyone. My name is Don Marie. And my name is Stacy. We'd like to talk about heart disease. I think all of you are aware that heart disease is prevalent in our country. You see about it on TV and on internet news articles. So we're gonna talk about what heart disease actually is and the different types of heart disease. We're gonna talk about how, um, how you get those, how you get the heart disease via obesity, genetics, the environment. Uh, there are quite a few factors and we'll talk about who tends to get heart disease. Uh, we'll talk about the age of onset and gender as well. We'll first cover warning signs. Um, now, warning signs actually uh, differ between men and women. For men, if you're suffering discomfort and pain in the upper chest, if you're having uh, difficulty breathing, if your heartbeat is abnormal, you know, whether it's too slow or too fast, if you're perspiring for an unknown reason, you know, uh, or if you're having some nauseation and not feeling well and dizziness, those are the signs for men. Women have those same signs, but they have a few additional ones. One is pain in the jaw or the back, and also extreme nausea and vomiting. Those are two additional signs that you'll see in women. Very com those are the common signs. The most prevalent symptom for women is shortness of breath, which then leads to discomfort in their upper back. For men, it tends to be chest discomfort. For women, they tend to notice this more in the morning or later in the evening. And it tends to be at home um, and in the bathroom. <laughs> um, it's interesting. Okay, I want to share my story. 23 years ago, or no, yeah, almost 23 years ago, in 1992, while I was a student here at RIT, I had an aortic valve replacement procedure due to an infection from the dentist. Um, unfortunately, I went to see a dentist and developed an infection, and it, uh, it impacted my heart, and so I had the aortic valve replacement procedure done. And many, many years later, oh, let me go back. That was a human donor valve replacement. But just, just last year, March 2012, I was having some problems in my uh, chest, in my arm. I was having difficulty breathing, dizziness, all the signs. And so I decided to go to the ER as a result of that, and they discovered that the valve was leaking. <coughs> and it had not been replaced since 1992 and it became infected, I was very sick. I spent a week in the hospital, and they said that I was, it was too risky to perform surgery because of the infection at that time. They weren't sure what to do, so for a week, a week later, I was transferred to another hospital. And let me do share that my health um, was a, a point where I wasn't even sure if I would, could survive the surgery or even live at all, so they decided to try a new approach, the transcatheter aortic valve replacement, and the acronym is TAVR. It has not been approved by the FDA as of yet in the U.S. It's widely used in Europe for a variety of ages, but here in the USA it's only for people who are 16 or older. And so I was um, in Florida at that time, and. They were willing to have me go through it. And it's just a real small stent. It's sort of like mesh, and they go through, you know, up to the heart, and they compress the valve to prevent the valve from leaking. I almost didn't survive the surgery. Um, I coded, and it was quite an experience for me. I had a few friends with me, and uh, Stacy was one who was in the room there at that time. 
but I did survive the surgery after all. And you know, over my recovery period, they, they said I was able to go home. Well, at, at another point, I was coded again, and my sister was there. There was a sign language interpreter. It was an extremely emotional time for me, for Stacy, for my other close friends who were in the area who came to visit me and provide me some, some support. And at that point, they weren't sure whether I should stay in the hospital or go home, and so I was there for another two weeks. So I was hospitalized for a total of four weeks, and I came, went home with a live vest that they were able to monitor my, my signs, my vital signs. And so now the TAVR procedure is considered temporary. And so it's been a year and a half for me and I'm still surviving well. The study now is in the second phase of the trials, but that experience, I'm just so thankful for the people who were, were able to give me the support I needed. If it wasn't for those friends, who I've been friends with for so long from here at NTID and RIT, those people were the ones who were critical to my recovery and made a difference and helped me get through such a trying time. So it's been a year and a half now. And since that time, I've valued my friendships even more and to Stacy so much so, to Rhea, to Christy, uh, to, to uh, you know, Christy especially because she spent a month and a half with me taking care of me while I was at home recovering. I had health aides who would stay overnight, you know, when my sister had to, you know, take care of her family and Stacy came over. Even though it was an hour drive away, she would come and provide me company, the support, my sister as well. So those were so crucial to my recovery. So that was March in 2012. Uh, then nine months later, it was my turn. Exactly 10 months ago yesterday, um, it was a typical day. Got into my garage, uh, did my workout, and uh, as I was lifting weights, all of a sudden I felt a shortness of breath. It just wasn't um, my typical breathing pattern. So I sat down took a break, experienced some upper back pain, and then I started to feel nauseous. And I thought, you know what? I could be having a heart attack. Um, and for some reason, during the workout, um, it just, something happened. It's really important, uh, especially for everybody. Um, when you're working out, it is helpful to continue working out. Um, and so I decided that I was buying my time by doing that. And I really bless my husband who was home that day. He decided for whatever reason to work from home. And so um, he was aware of what was going on and we decided that I should go see the doctor. And so when I went to the doctor, he said, I think we immediately need to set you up with the EKG. And um, so I went over to, he wanted me to go over to the ER, but I decided that rather than going to the ER, I'd rather uh, get the test in another uh, setting. And when I entered the office, uh, there was a flurry of activity. They said that, um, you know, in, if you hadn't come in here, you could have died within 15 minutes. Uh, there were a lot of tests that I went through during that um, the time that I was actually hospitalized. They gave me uh, echocardiogram, a sonogram. They uh, gave me a test that uh, entered my body through my thigh. And uh, the cardiologist came in and told me I had three blockages in my heart. I had uh, one that was 70% blocked. That was the aorta. Uh, my husband's in the audience, he's helping me. One that was 86% and one that was 99% blocked. So I was uh, entitled a walking time bomb. And to be honest with you, I was ready to ignore the symptoms. Now, they decided that the aorta, because it was partially blocked, uh, was not as severe as the other two. It seems that, I guess this is normal, that we have three flaps in our heart. And in my case, that wasn't true. The physician asked me how I became deaf. And I became deaf out of, uh, because of 
Connection 26, which was a specific type of condition that the doctors saw at birth, and apparently that is connected with heart disease. I was unaware of that. The cardiologist gave me two choices. He said I could have some stents or I could have a triple bypass and a valve replacement. Now, as far as valve replacements goes, they can either be mechanical or they can be vo bovine or pig. I decided to choose the mechanical valve replacement. Uh, the recovery time has been long. The recovery time was not as expected. It was very emotional, somewhat depressing. Um, I have recovered 100%. I'm blessed to have my good friend, Dawn Marie. Uh, it was my turn to experience heart disease, but she was such a support for me and a resource as I had many questions. And all of that relates to coming here to NTID. Without NTID, I would not have the support system I have. I would not have met this wonderful friend in my life. I would have not met the other important people in my life, um, especially my husband. It's a hard time for him. I would have not met the wonderful friends that I have on Facebook and the team that supported me through it all. And that is all because of NTID. And that's why we wanted to share our story, our challenge, so that hopefully we can maybe save somebody else uh, save another life. You know, I knew what she was going through because I'd gone through it twice myself, and so we were a resource for each other, and we thought we wanted to share the story with our friends. You know, the friends that we've made at Antony to make sure that they had the support, and you know, especially those who've helped us over the year, you know, for me the last year and a half. So I appreciate us coming here and sharing our stories. Thank you all. Yes.